Hi everybody, welcome very much to the channel. Today we are here to review the reveal of the new variant Civ for the Chinese civilization that will be out with the next expansion pack, November 14th, the Sultan's Ascend. Remember to go and pre-order it on Steam as well. And remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and use the links down below to catch me live on Twitch as well. So, this is the variant civilization of the Chinese, the Zhu Shi's Legacy. I think it's pronounced like that. If it's not, let me know in the comments down below. So, let's take a look. But before we do that, I just want to know your opinion, guys. Let me know in the comments down below if you share this uh, fear, quote-unquote fear, that I have right now, which is like we already know about John Dark, we already know, we already know about the IU beats, we already know about the Zoo Seas legacy, and do you think that it, it's going to be like this? Like, why should I play French if I can play John Dark? Why should I play Abbasi if I can play IU beats? Why should I play Chinese if I can play Zoo Shi's Legacy, right? But at least John Dark and Zoo Shi's Legacy seems very different from their base civilization. But the IU beats, oh uh, no, the, uh, yeah, they, they seem very different. No, no, the John Dark seems similar, but Zhu, Zhu Si's Legacy and the IU beats seem very different. So, John, I think that will probably be a problem. Uh, more between French and John Dark because they seem more similar. So why would you play French instead of John Dark? Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this uh, little fear of mine as well. And let's get started. Let's begin. Zhu Shi's Legacy is a variant of Age of Empires 4 Chinese civilization and available with the Sultan's Ascend expansion. The teachings of the philosopher Zhu Shi reshape the Chinese civilization with Zhu Shi's legacy, the Chinese boasts a sophisticated administration with superior imperial officials, that's gonna be awesome guys, and advanced technologies. The brimming treasury helps to establish powerful dynasties and research a breadth of unique technologies. Recruit palace guards, Zuganus, and grenadiers early on to protect the, the empire. Oh, my bad, guys. So, I already read a little bit of this yesterday, and one of the main differences will be in uh, Song Dynasty, for an example. So, keep watching until you reach that part. Playing Zhu Shi's Legacy. Zhu Shi's Legacy is a, technologi a technological powerhouse, while Chinese is more of an economical, like, villager number powerhouse, right? The early bonuses in the Tang and Song dynasty help the civilization advance faster and build toward a bountiful economic foundation. With a strong industrial framework, they can field vast amounts of dynasty units early in the game. Combined with the Palace Guard being available in the Feudal Age, that's huge, I think that's going to be super fun to play uh, Zushis like in the Feudal Age, you just uh, palace cards to the enemy and then they run faster so you can uh, do early aggression earlier than usual right combined with the palace cards being available in the feudal age zushi's legacy can amass great armies of unique units with ease there are many options for improv improving the zushi's legacy's imperial official with unique upgrades such as faster movement that's going to be great so they can collect uh, gold faster higher build limits and improving so you can build more than four and improving the supervisability and perhaps you can gain another resource when you tax your buildings right with imperial officials catapulting zushi's legacy into the mid game the huan dynasty synergizes with a strong economy by helping produce more military units in the imperial age zushi's legacy offers strategic choices for unit up, unique you un, know for unit upgrades av available via landmarks the ming dynasty improves unique units making the zushi's legacy a force to be reckoned with in the late game so china 
or here the variant civilization of China, still maintaining that late game uh, powerhouse aspect, I think, but in a different way, more militarily focused than our regular China available right now. So, the Zushi's legacy units at glance. Early Palace Guard. The Palace Guard is available in the Feudal Age for Zushi's legacy instead of Castle Age. This fast infantry unit creates opportunities for early skirmishes. That's, I think, very important because one of the quote-unquote bad things about our current China is that you can't really, I mean, you can fight in feudal, right? But you have to invest a lot and kind of be an all-in. I think with early palace card, you can do things way more balanced and you can, your pushes will have more bulk to it because of the early armor. We don't know how much armor or how much tanky, how, how, how tanky these guys will be. Hopefully they will add a bit more oomph to the feudal pushes of the Chinese. And just raids in general, right? R running around the base. I I'm sure they'll be better than horsemen at that work, right? Then we have the Imperial Guard and Huan Rider, which they look really good, especially in green. Them lancers with the green mantle look really, really good. The Imperial Guard and Yuan Raider become available once Dynastic, Dynastic Protectors is researched at Zushi's library landmark. So I think it's Imperial Age only. These powerful cavalry units complement the infantry forces of Zushi's legacy by providing unique characteristics in battle. Wow, what? that's very interesting, because they complement the infantry. So maybe like, they give armor to people around them, I don't know, we have to wait and see. But that, that could be like, charge bonus, I don't know, your palace guards don't have a charge. Or something like, if they go with these cavalry units, they can charge together into battle. You know what I'm saying? That will be nice. And now, a more deep uh, understanding of how uh, Zushi's legacy works throughout the ages, right? Age 1. Dark Ages. From Age 1, the Tang Dynasty enables the Zushi's legacy to build cheaper landmarks. Because that's one of the things that makes the Chinese civilization quite slow, is that for you to achieve the bonuses, for you to achieve the highest potential of that civilization, you have to age up twice with the Barbican of the Sun and the Imperial Academy. That can be really, really slow. But if they're cheaper, I think you can make China here a bit more agile and flexible, right? They also start the game with an Imperial official. Bro, that's so good. You don't need to create or build the Imperial official. You already have one. That's so, so good, man. Uh, so they also start the game with an Imperial official for fast access to both taxes and the supervised ability. That's gonna be very good, guys. Maybe a little, a little bit broken. But perhaps they will not be as good as the normal ones, because then you have to upgrade them. I don't know. It will be a way to balance, right? H2. In H2, Zhu uh, Shi's legacy can build the med med Meditation Gardens, an economical landmark that generates resources based on what is nearby. But enemy units disrupt the peace and reduce its income. Constructing both landmarks will unlock the powerful Song Dynasty, which makes all economic builds cheaper. So that's the huge difference I was talking about earlier. Because in the Chinese, Song Dynasty makes you produce villagers on 15 seconds instead of 20 seconds. But for the Zushi's legacy, it will make every economical building granaries I don't know if houses count, but farms, mills, cheaper. And I think that if farms are cheaper and the granaries too, that will be an insane boost to the Chinese economy, right? H3, and by the way, I really like the design, the theme of the meditation gardens, while uh, where enemy units perturb the peace, perturb the focus of the meditation, and the landmark kind of loses a little bit of its power. Moving on. H3, in H3, Zhu Xi's legacy can construct the Mount Lu Academy landmark, which adds food to the tax income, that's so good, guys, and includes powerful technologies that improve the Imperial official. The Shaolin Monastery opens up the production of the Shaolin Monk, so you can go eco or military here on the H3. A powerful martial arts master capable of enduring even the fiercest of attacks. 
Bro, they look really cool, by the way. I hope they're good. And the landmark looks awesome, too, man. Great design. Wait, because they're green. Will the tiles change color if you change color, too? Ooh, that will be very interesting. Finally, on H4, Zushi's Legacy has access to Zushi's Library, a landmark which houses many powerful, unique technologies. However, only a few can be chosen to research. So you go into a more specific uh, gameplay choice over here. And the Temple of the Sun landmark has four power toggles, which globally improve specific units. So they don't they don't mention if the units that are improved are economical or military. So perhaps both, and you have to choose. Maybe they have like a time duration, and then you choose what you want to boost. Guys, in my opinion, this seems great. This seems a powerful economy paired with a powerful but strategic military. It seems unique, but also familiar to the Chinese that we already know. So I really, really like this. And I think I'll main Japanese and Zushi's legacy on the next expansion. It will be awesome, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe. Tell me your opinions in the comments down below. Catch me live on Twitch using the links down below as well. Until the next time, the next video or live stream, Esoteric Lot Surfer, surfing out. See you soon.